Um, discussion. I think I thank you for you know uh, passing that out. I realize that most of you guys would like to speak, and I I hope I give you the opportunity or I hit the points that you have said. But um, I would also uh, remind you that that uh, the, the soils data that you folks have in your possession when when you issued the first conditional use permit went down to six feet. That was that S S E S. Soil profiles go down to 60. It doesn't tell us anything about what it's going to look like at 40 feet and whether or how much alluvial uh, gravels and sands you're going to have in that location. My point of actually bringing this up is that we've got an active aquifer right there. And, uh, and, and you know, the notion that, you know, I've heard comments in the newspaper that, that uh, there's no way this water's going to make it to the Humboldt River unless water can run uphill. I think that's a quote. And that, that's a disingenuous comment. And the bottom line is, is, we're not talking about surface runoff here. We're talking about subterranean flow. And it is an active aquifer. Jungle flat didn't just happen. It happened for a reason now. Um, I would tell you that, that because we have the capability in play right now for us to actually get some specific information about the flow of this and the direction of flow on this thing and where this stuff ends up, it is, I believe, we need to look at this from the standpoint of, of uh, minimizing our risk. I had some comments made to me by folks who wanted to know where we were two years ago. Why am I flapping my gums right now about this? Um, two years ago, I wasn't invited to the, to the game. And, and I can tell you right now, I had no idea of the magnitude or size of this project. Um, in looking at the uh, one of the things that came to my mind was that, my goodness, uh, uh, if we'd have, the, the notion that this, that this project somehow flies under the radar relative to an environmental nexus or a public health nexus because, because it is on private property it is disingenuous as well. We've got a lot of mines sitting on deeded ground all around Humboldt County right now, and most of them, I could say, are analogous to what is being proposed right here. They've got large piles of material out there that they're sprinkling uh, toxic materials on and they're trying to collect it and recirculate. And, and there's lots and lots of, of planning that goes into, and engineering that goes into minimizing the risks that occur relative to uh, uh, groundwater contamination or air quality. Well, getting back, back to the mines, they have the leach pads and the berms and everything set out there, and some of them leak. We know that. Exactly right. You know what? I, I know what. And, 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 and I'm sorry. Okay. And these folks have a plan to do the same thing with their project. One big difference, sir. The big difference is these mining companies actually, when they were in their, when they submitted their plans of operations, they actually spent the money to actually write an environmental impact statement to actually analyze the risks that would occur in those locations and to not only analyze but also uh, uh, develop a range of alternatives that would minimize the risk not only to the, to the public's water but also to their liability. And it also gave them the opportunity to come up with a range of alternatives. And that range of alternatives actually lists what are we going to do if something bad happens on this, on this line? Oh, by the way, how are we going to know if something bad happens on this land? And then secondly, what is the, uh, not only do we have a remediation plan if something does go south on it, and it will, we can count on it, but what are we going to do about it at, uh, in terms of monitoring for that leak? Uh, I have yet to see any engineered drawings at all from this project to talk about leak detection uh, technologies. Nothing to do with or having to do with uh, deep wells, which would have third-party analysis of water. Um, every one of these mines has been required at their, on their nickel to do that, and that's and that's not because we're trying to penalize them. It's because we're trying uh, we're trying to come up with a, a a range of alternatives that's going to protect the public's interest in this. Um, that has not been offered in this one. Um, the I would say that, uh, you know, we could actually talk about uh, things other than water quality here, and, and uh, uh, I think I'll reserve my comments uh, on the, on the uh, air quality aspect of this thing until uh, after the NDEP permit is actually um, uh, issued. But we have issues relative to that as well. 
I would, I would close my remarks by saying that, that we, have, uh, we have a lot of expertise available to us in this community. We have a lot of expertise available to us that is being offered through Senator DeRee's bill in the form of USGS. And I believe on something this large, with this big of a problem that, that, that could develop from a leak, um, I think we owe it to everybody that, to uh, take whatever measures necessary to make sure we do this right. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying maybe it might not be in that location. We've got an active aquifer in there and we need to, just, they need to, um, Recology needs to come to the table with specific drawings, specific technologies, and specific planning that can, uh, can answer a lot of folks' questions out here, including your own, in terms of what our risks are and, and how are we going to minimize those risks to the environment. Jim? Yes. What is the NRS debt that could require them to have a, uh, some kind of environmental impact report, something of that nature? Uh, the NRS statute, they can require it depending on the, on the project itself. NDEP has not had a history of doing that. I don't know why. I can't explain that for you. Um, you guys could request a, not necessarily an EIS, wouldn't call it an EIS, but you certainly could ask for a technical report that would address many of those issues. And, and uh, certainly the county commission should do the same thing before they enter into a, a host agreement. Uh, this, there are some real significant issues that need to be vetted on this thing, and, uh, and just just drawing lines in the sand and we're for it, we're again it, isn't going to cut the mustard anymore. We really need to get down to the facts, get away from the emotion part of this thing, and we need to start. This, we need to make the decision on this thing based on the best information available, and we need to make it based on on uh, minimizing the risk to the public. And I, and I think that's, you, you did it for years, Bob. I know I did it with, with, in my capacity. I know you folks do it all the time. So. I thank you for your time, and I appreciate you sitting here listening. <laughs>